Okay, yes, yeah, so we got interrupted there a little bit, but that's all right. So what I was trying to explain is that there are different coordinate systems based on what you're looking at. Um, and inside this viewport, things will go from 0 to 1, and 0 to 1, 0 to 1 on X, 0 to 1 on the Y. That represents basically your percentage across uh, the viewing area. And then all this stuff in the world has world coordinates um, that can go out you know, as far as you want to. So um, there's different coordinate systems, and we'll get into another one that's based on GUIs too a little bit later. But for now, that's... Uh, that's why some of this code is going to look a bit, little bit goofy. If you don't quite follow it, it's okay. Just type it in, and um, hopefully it'll make sense a little bit later. So, um, oh boy. so yeah, where did I put that? There it is. Okay, so um, we're going to go finish our camera follow script, and we've got our target, which is going to be our guy. We've got a damp time that's going to make it you know, um, nice and smooth. And then we've also got a velocity of our camera that we've set to zero. So on update, um, one thing that we needed to figure out is where is um, our guy um, in relation to where the camera is. And so I'll just type this in, vector three point equals get component camera dot world view to screen point. And that's going to be target dot position. Okay, so we are saying um, world view, world to viewport point of the target position. So trying to figure out where is this position of our target in relation to what the camera is looking at. Um, and now we need to figure out the difference. So we will say uh, vector three delta the change equals target dot position minus get component camera viewport to world point new vector three zero point five f zero point five f comma point dot z. All right, what the heck did that just mean? All right, so this is a lot of stuff here, but what's happening is um, we know where the target is and we want to figure out how far we're going to move. And the way we're going to do that is by we convert the camera's viewport to a world point. Um, but then we're also doing this 0 0.5, 0 0.5 business. And the point dot z um, is we're just keeping the z constant. So we got our point here at the beginning, um, and we're just using that to make sure that we don't change our, our uh, z dimensions of the camera. We want to not move it backwards or forwards. You want to leave it in the same spot. Um, but this 0.5 and this 0.5, what the heck does that represent? And what that's representing is the actual center point of our camera. Uh, because it goes from 0 to 1 on the x, 0 to 1 on the y, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is this point right here in the middle. Um, so we're trying to look at, we convert the very center of what our camera sees to our world point, and our target is already in world point, and so we're trying to figure out how far do we have to move. Um, and that's that. So this is how far we're going to move. We'll do one more here. We'll say, where are we going? Vector 3 destination equals transform dot position plus delta. That's where we're going. And now we're going to update our position of our camera. So we will say transform dot position equals vector 3 dot smooth damp. And we'll say transform dot position. We're going to destination. And we'll pass velocity by reference. Remember, we started out at zero, but that's going to change. And then our damp time. OK, so this, transform.position, this means the position of this current object, which in this case is the camera. Remember, in uh, player controller, when we were referring to transform.position, that's referring to our red block, because that this 
script is attached to that particular transform. So that way we can say transform.position, referring to the object that this script is attached to. Same with camera follow. When we modify camera dot or transform.position, we are referring to uh, the camera transform. And because this script is attached to the camera. And this is all we need to do. If we save this and run it. Now we see that our camera is nicely following us wherever we go, it even goes up and down. And as we fall down to the, to the bottom, there we go. And so it was, you know, not that much code. One, two, three, four lines of code. Um, this one here gets basically the Z position of the camera uh, because we don't want to change it. This one here figures out how much do we have to move. This one figures out where we're going. And then this line out here uh, says, this uh, is where we're at, this is where we're headed, um, this is my damp time, this is how fast we're going. And it just takes care of itself. So um, that is what we've got for a camera follow script. And remember that the transform little t is always referring to the object that the script is attached to. Um, so there's a transform.position inside of our camera follow, which is the position of the camera. And there's also a transform.position inside of our player controller, which is the position of the player. And those are the two differences. So um, with all this thing that we've been working on for a little while, we now have a nice uh, little game um, where we can make things jump and follow around. And we can build as much as we want in the scene now. Uh, you know, We have unlimited space, basically, because the camera is always going to follow our red character. So we can put as many platforms as we want down here. Um, we can make them go up, we can make them go all the way to the right, or all the way to the left. Um, however you want to do it, we can do it and the camera's going to follow us all the way through to the end. So uh, I think that ends um, the camera follow stuff.